Welcome to Stories in Time. My name is Eloise Schottler. I'm your storyteller. Today I'm going to tell you a very, very old, old, old story. And it fits in with any holiday season because it's about gift giving. Long, long ago, in a village far from anything else, there were three brothers. They were adventurous types, and they often sat together and talked about what their next adventure was be, would be. One day they decided that they would go off on trips, but they would go separately. They would start at the same time, but they would go separately, and they would meet back here in their village in five years and they would bring back the most interesting gift that they could find on their travels to show each other. It sounded like such a wonderful plan. And the next day, they started off. The older brother went to the east. The middle brother went to the west, and the younger brother went to the south. Now, the older brother traveled for two, three, maybe four weeks before he found anything that was particularly interesting to him. He came upon a town that had a huge market and carnival going on. Why, there were acrobats in costume, there were jugglers, there were all sorts of things going on, and there were fascinating things being sold. He walked over to one tent, and there was a man sitting there, and he was holding sort of a long tube that he said was a looking glass. And he held it up to the brother's eye, and he said, look through there and see what you see. And he looked through. And he could see all the way beyond the boundaries of this festival, beyond the boundaries of this land to another land. And he said, what is this? And the man looked at him and he said, that's a very special, very magic glass. It can see far, far into the distance. I would like to have it. What is the price on this? It's not for sale, said the man. Oh, I must have it. And they argued and they bargained and finally the man gave up and he sold it to the oldest brother who thought this is the perfect gift for me to take back to my brothers. Now, the second brother went to the West and he traveled for a month or more before he found something that truly interested him. He walked into a market and there was a man sitting next to a stack of beautiful rugs. And the man saw him coming toward him and he said, come and see these beautiful rugs. Come, you'll never see anything like these again. Come and see these beautiful rugs. And he walked over and they indeed were beautiful. And he ran his hand down that stack and he looked at the colors, but there was something different about the rug that it was at the bottom of this stack. It was moving. It was moving on its own. And as it moved, it moved itself out of the stack further and further until it plopped down right on the ground in front of his feet. What is this? And the man said, that is a very special carpet. I don't have but one of those, and I rarely ever get them. Well, what's so wonderful? About it's a magic carpet. Really? He said, just step your feet onto that carpet. And he did. And as he stepped onto the carpet, the carpet... It moved, it moved, it moved itself right up off the ground. And he was hovering over the ground, standing on the carpet, and he jumped off. And the carpet fell to the ground. And the man said, that's a magic carpet. It will take you anywhere that you want to go. Anywhere. 
He argued with the man. He bargained with the man. He begged for it, and finally they came to a price, and he bought the magic carpet. The younger brother went to the south, and he went further and further every day, every week, every month, and he found himself in a country that was just covered with forests beautiful trees of all kinds, standing very tall, different shapes, beautiful. And he walked through those forests, and one day he walked into a clearing. The tall trees were all around, beautiful shades of green. And he was standing in a clearing, and in the middle of that clearing was a tree of another shape. And it had bright blossoms all over it. And as he marked, cl walked closer, he saw that there was one pomegranate hanging on that tree. And he walked over to look at it closely, and he thought, what kind of a gift would this be? But it is certainly a wonderful story to tell my brothers that I came into a clearing surrounded by tall trees, and there was one tree with buds all over it and only one fruit a pomegranate, and at that he decided that's what he would take. And as he reached up to pluck the fruit, it dropped right into his hand. Oh, that was a surprise. This must have some power, he thought. And he opened his case and he put it in. And as he walked away, he turned around to look at the tree again, and the tree was gone. Surely this is a magic pomegranate. He carried that with great care for the five years, just like his other brothers were carrying their treasures with great care. And at the end of the five years, they met again. And they were so happy to see each other and so excited to show each other their fine gifts. The older brother brought out the tube with the spyglass on the end and was telling them about it and then going to show them. And he looked through that tube, that spyglass, and he saw all the way past the town, past the borders, past the edge of this country and into the next country. And there was a window in a palace ahead of him. And in that room was a very sad king weeping and on the bed was a beautiful young girl surrounded by what looked to be doctors or sorcerers or people who were trying to offer her medicines and she looked frightfully frightfully sick and he said, there's a princess. I don't know where it is, but there's a princess far, far away. I can see it in my glass. And she's sick, and she needs help. And the second brother put down his carpet. And he said, well, let's step onto this carpet. You don't know. Maybe we could be of help. Maybe we could be of, maybe on our trip. We've learned something. From wherever we've been, we could be of help. And they stepped on, the three of them, and the carpet lifted up, and within moments, it was right there in front of that palace. They knocked. The door was opened. We've come to see if we can help the princess, who looks very, she is very sick. She is very sick. She is dying. And all of the people in our land who could help her can't. Nothing seems to help. Follow me. And they went up to the room. The king was sitting by her bed. Tears were just flowing down his cheeks. He was so sad. And they walked over and they said, we came to see if we could help. I had a spyglass that showed me where you were, and my brother has a magic carpet, and it brought us here. And the younger brother said, I have, I think, a magic fruit, a pomegranate, that might be the thing to heal her. May I give her some? 
And the king said, yes, you can. And if you heal her, the one that heals her can have her in marriage and half my kingdom. Well, the younger brother sat down on the edge of the bed. He took out the pomegranate, which was in perfect shape, and he took out a knife and he cut it in half. And he scoped out, just sort of scooped out the kernels and held them in his hand and he reached over and he put the first one on her lips. And she took it in. Never opened her eyes, but she felt it on her lips and she opened her mouth and it slipped into her mouth and put another one in and another and another. She opened her eyes. Her face wasn't so pale anymore. She looked better. She looked, oh. And he gave her some more kernels on her lips and then she sat up. Her father, I can't believe this. And the younger brother said, I heard a voice in my head saying, the pomegranate, the pomegranate, and I gave you seeds from the pomegranate. Well, the king was just beside himself. He was so happy. And he said, the one of you will have to decide who did the most to bring her back from her illness, and you will be the one to marry her and have half this kingdom. Well, the three brothers sat off to the side. I saw it first. I knew that they needed us, and so we, that's why we came. And the second brother said, it was my magic carpet that flew us here. And the third brother was quiet. And then finally he said, I gave her my pomegranate kernels, and she responded to those. They were healing. Well, there was no decision. The king looked at them. The, the brothers couldn't decide. The king looked at them, and he couldn't decide. And finally, he turned to his daughter, who was now wide awake, sitting up on her bed. And she was known not just as a beautiful princess, but as a wise princess. And he said, which one do you think is the one that did the most to bring you back from your illness? Father, I'll do anything that you tell me to, but I do want to ask each one of them a question, and maybe that will help us decide which one. And she looked at the oldest brother and she said, the spyglass that you speak of, is it now the same as when you came here? When you saw the castle and then you came here, is it still the same? And he said, oh yes, it is. And when we get married, you can look through it and see all the things that you might want to. You can see as far and wide as you would wish to see. Nothing has happened to that spyglass. Oh, and she said to the second, and he said, yes, my magic carpet will take us everywhere. And then she said to the youngest one, and what about your pomegranate? And he said, no, it's not the same. I gave half of it to you so that you could eat the kernels and drink the juice of the healing pomegranate. So mine is not the same. It's only a half of what it was. Father, this is the brother that I wish to marry. He gave the most when he gave his gift. He gave half of it to me. He's the one that I want for my husband. And lo and behold, that is what happened. They had a wonderful wedding. The other two brothers were made advisors, and they all lived together happily ever after. <laughs>